we are moving towards our next panel discussion, which will talk about the dynamics and diversity of OTT content. Once again, some stalwarts from the industry are here with us on this panel. It gives me immense pleasure to welcome them and introduce them to all of you. We have with us Mr. Vijay Subramaniam, Director and Head Content, Amazon Prime Video India. Nikhil Madhuk, Executive Vice President and Head of Hotstar Specials, Disney Plus Hotstar. We have with us Mr. Vijay Koshi, President TVF. Mr. B. Srinivasan, Managing Director, Wicketon Group of Publications. And chairing the session is Mr. Gaurav Rakshit, Chief Operating Officer, Viacom 18 Digital Ventures. A very warm welcome to all of you. Hi, good evening. Hello. Good evening, Gaurav. Good evening. Hi, Gaurav. Hi, Vijay. Guys. Hi, Nikhil. Hi, Gaurav. Hi. Hey, hey. hey, Vijay. Hi, Srini. Good to see you. Nice to see everyone here. Yes. Uh, it's obviously a really hard time to do some of these panels because uh, uh, kind of the backdrop of lockdown is on, on all of us and, and you know, all our teams are struggling. And so uh, it's times I'm really glad to have such an August panel with me because uh, some of the questions I have are genuinely those that I, I'm looking for help and answers on. And so it's nice to be on the other end of uh, the panel playing the role of moderator uh, rather than sort of uh, having to take them on. Uh, let's open with the you know, 600 pound gorilla that's, that, that's around us. The, the, the lockdown has precipitated a lot of change. Uh, in, in, in all our lives. And um, while I think consumer appetite for digital content is just continuously rising and, and, and even faster on account of lockdown, all of us are facing significant stress, stresses in terms of uh, putting together content uh, for these uh, consumers. And uh, I wanted to just get you know, early on how that has changed your outlook in terms of uh, both the, the process that you're going through uh, to uh, put content out and how it's perhaps informed some of the choices that you're making going forward because uh, ostensibly this is here to stay for a while. It's not, it's not going to, uh, to go away in a, in a, in a hurry. So uh, and that's, that's a question to all of you all. I hope each of, each of you have you know, interesting takes on the subject. Nikhil, maybe you can start us off and uh, let's hear what, what, what you think about the situation we're going through right now. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thanks, Gaurav. And, uh... Uh, hi to everyone who's who's watching this. Um, great question. All of us are uh, sort of uh, you know struggling with this a bit. But uh, if I speak from uh, a Disney Plus Hotstar perspective, if you look at the content uh, a little more broadly that we have on our platform, uh, outside of just the original content that we create, so there are multiple uh, content pipes, starting from our television shows, which we drop, uh, continue to drop daily on the platform. Uh, there is our partnerships with the Hollywood studios from which we get a lot of Hollywood content. Of course, uh, from Disney itself, uh, including the Disney Plus originals, uh, the recent one being Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Uh, till recently, we also had Cricket. And then we have the original content that we're creating. So fortunately, because of the width of the content streams on the platform, uh, we've still, you know, even over the last one month and even now managed to offer a fair amount of uh, variety of content to our, to our viewers. Uh, if you look at original content, which is really what we call Hotstar Specials, um, there is some uh, advantage to the fact that uh, some of our productions have already taken place and we're now in the post-production phase. So I see for the next couple of months for us to be you know, sorted at least from a content delivery point of view uh, and you know, have something uh, to offer. I think on a larger level, what happens six months down the line if this you know, sort of continues to stay, the first and most important thing is, do we have uh, you know, a, the ability to actually produce content? So if the you know, sort of lockdowns, et cetera, continue, then we need to manage with the, uh, the rules of the government if it doesn't allow us to shoot. Uh, but if, if those sort of permissions start coming in, I think the first preference, first attempt really will be to make sure what we already have under production is, is, is completed and we sort of you know, get back onto our uh, pipeline in a, in a more organized fashion. Um, so yeah, I think the, the, the long and short of it is for now, from a width of offering point of view, there's, there, is, there is enough to offer. 
Uh, but going forward, if this continues for more than three to six months, then uh, you know they, we'll have to figure out different ways of attacking the problem. Sure. Thanks, Nikhil. That's that, that's an interesting perspective based on you know width of content and and so possibly being able to uh, still bring out something that people want to watch. Uh, Vijay Koshi, uh, you are a self-confessed only creator of non-fast food content, and uh, your content uh, you obviously hold at, at, at a high benchmark. How does this affect uh, your lives in terms of a rethink or rejig, or do you just slow down? Uh, where does this go? So, so we were faced with a similar situation last year, um, and and uh, we just got into. Uh, a large hardcore planning mode and preparation uh, for our existing pipeline. We have almost 10 to 15 shows um, ready in various stages of uh, production. Um, so we managed to put out four shows in, in the first few months of, of this year. And uh, we have some more slated in the next couple of months uh, on various other platforms. And uh, the standard uh, crib that most of our uh, creative team used to have that we're not getting enough time for preparation and we're already, always rushing into projects and we're always uh, um, under pressure from other uh, clients and all of that. So we need some breathing time. So we're saying, hey, this is the best uh, uh, you know, opportunity you're getting. Just keep, uh, uh, go back to the nets, keep practicing, keep uh, planning properly and, uh, that's that's all that we can do at this point in time. So otherwise, there is no major change uh, in terms of the content choices that we're making. We just I think we are using this time to just uh, prepare better um, for the time coming ahead. That's largely what we're doing. That's nice. I mean, I'm I, I I hear you because there is pain in the creative community around us demanding speed and and uh, perhaps most of us on this call are to blame in some fashion for that. But the reality is then there's hope for better quality stories coming out because there is more time now. And you know that would be nice if, if that happens. Uh, Vijay, I mean, you guys plan so many, um, not, not even months, quarters, years ahead. How does something that shakes uh, the core of your schedules, uh, how, do you, how do you roll with that? <laughs> what do you do? Um, well, you just answered the question, <laughs> you know, we plan quarters, years ahead, and that helps um, mitigate to a large extent. Yeah. Um, and, and I think we've been very fortunate that we've stuck to the knitting. Um, even as we've scaled, uh, even as uh, you know, our business has gone from a show in a year to 12 shows in the next year, a couple of um, big movies in a year to almost 105 movies a year. The, the key for us has been the multiple and the diverse um, pipelines that we have. Uh, I think that's held us in good stead and continues to. I mean, if you think about the last five months, just the sheer number of uh, uh, fresh content pieces we've been able to launch. Um, more recently, we just uh, put out the trailer for the last hour. We launched uh, uh, LOL Hasito Fasi, which, which went live a couple of weeks ago. Uh, got a couple of big launches coming up in June. There's a whole raft of films that we brought onto the service, starting the year with Drishyam 2 in Malayalam 2, Master coming within two weeks of its theatrical release and followed by Yuvaratna and Mumbai Saga and so on. I can go on and on. And it, the point really is that as challenging as this is, um, and you know, and, and it's really important to, to recognize the situation for what it is and, and partner with practically everyone we work with to make sure that you know, they have robust protocols in place whenever uh, stuff uh, resumes. I can safely say that the years of planning is actually, you know, um, kept us more than head and shoulders above, above uh, the situation so far. So, and we're banking on the fact that our pipelines will continue to remain, um, you know, interesting. Uh, TVF is one such partner and they know uh, they have a, we have a show that's, uh, that's to be launched pretty soon. So I guess it's just, uh, you know, the short answer from my side is just the planning, man. Just the rigorous planning and, and the fact that we have multiple pipelines of content. That's awesome, man. I mean, I, I, being very candid, we're obviously a more recent entrant into the SWOT space. And one of the challenges that we are looking at at least is uh, uh, when it opens up, it opens up for everyone. And so, you know, 
there, there's only so much talent. There are only so many crews uh, uh, to, to take the content forward. So I don't know how that's going to play out, but uh, uh, certainly slightly uh, concerned, if you will, in terms of how that's going to, to play out. Yeah, right? I, agree. I agree with you. Um, in fact, I second that view very strongly. Uh, not only is it a talent related uh, point, it's also an infrastructure related point. There are only so many post production studios. There are only so many sound stages, you know. So, and it's going to be everybody is going to be rushing to get their uh, stories completed. So yeah, but yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure you know being as um, dexterous and and industrious as we are as an industry, we'll invent our way through that as well. I'm pretty confident of that. Yeah, right. Just, that I agree. just to add to Vijay's point, uh, one of the other learnings that we've had is. Uh, if we've had a successful season one, then instead of doing season two and then waiting for some time and doing season three, we're now actually planning two seasons together at a go. So then years of planning that Amazon has done has helped us. And, and uh, we've, we've, learned, uh, we've learned that's the best way. So uh, it helps optimize uh, everyone's schedule and uh, you get a good product at the end of the day. Sure, that's good learning for all of us. Mr. Srinivasan, what's... Your take yeah. on I'm, I'm beginning to wonder if I'm the diversity quotient on this panel. <laughs> because, uh, you know, as, a, as an independent producer, probably a boutique production house from that perspective. Uh, you know, our biggest challenge is actually to retain the capacity to deliver of our talents. You know, talents, the two creative talents of this caliber that when we are dealing with, uh, there is only so much that you can do. Uh, most of the time we, you know, we spend a lot of time actually writing screenplay for our screenplay writers and for our directors. How do we cajole them? How do we coax them? Uh, how do we uh, assuage them when, you know, it comes to tough situations? Uh, you know, how, how do we actually get them, uh, uh, counsel them and get them out of their you know, the, the various challenges that they have. I mean, they call, they, we, we, would, we would have to call them for a for hundred things. I mean, Nikhil knows the challenges that we have had with November story and the timelines. And, uh, you know, sometimes there is only so much you can do when a director calls and he says, you know, uh, I've had this problem or it's a, it could be a personal problem, it could be a family problem and it could be, you know, COVID related. So it's um, maintaining our calm in ensuring that you know the talent's best interests are served so that the product's best interests are served is actually uh, one of the tightest ropes as an as an independent producer uh, that we need to be able to you know hold uh, because we are you know in in tamil there's a there's a word it's it's called makalam it's like you know the tabla you know we we get it both from the producers and from the talents right so we are right like a tight stuck right in the middle but yeah it's been interesting. It's a very interesting perspective. I think that's actually the uh, something that you know, whether whether you're a production or a studio or 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 uh, in in some cases the the platform, the being humane at these times is is really hard with your teams, and, and that includes you know employees, but also uh, the creative fraternity that works with you. Uh, it's important to you know. Fortunately, we built a fairly resilient industry, and so I think that the industry can afford. A break or, or what what have you we can't pretend like you know uh if it doesn't come on a particular date hell is going to break loose uh and and it's on all of us i suppose to to to, to figure out how to balance that um, I mean, Gaurav, frankly you know in in ott there's still that space on television there is no space there is no time you know everything is you know you have you, it, it's once once you've caught the tiger by the tail there's only that far you can go right and then you know, talents, while we say that we have actually groomed talents in our industry, I have to say that, you know, talents are still few and far between. And sometimes, you know, when we are retaining talent, we wonder with the kind of efforts that we take, you know, should they be retaining us as counselors? You know, it's like really, it, it takes a lot. And, you know, and really good talent, right? So you don't want to mess with them and you don't want to lose them, right? I mean, uh, Nikhil, Nikhil has a point of view probably on, on the television side as well in, the, in that sense and, and how that goes. Um, yeah, uh, I think the, the uh, we're right that the space is a little more on OTT and the, the way the television model works, you know, people are expecting something in prime time every night. 
And uh, I think to their credit, the way the television producers fraternity has got together and found solutions to keep going despite this, you know, uh, it is uh, it is uh, fairly commendable. It's as as you were saying, it's a resilient industry, and people find uh, solutions. You know, there are people who are uh, shooting in resorts in Goa, in Salvasa, in other parts of the country where they've been able to you know create a secure bubble. Now, of course, in places where the you know lockdown has been imposed, there's a different challenge. But uh, you know, for the last one month, uh, they've been at it. So I would say hats off to them. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with our. Our television counterparts, we learn so much from incredibly scrappy, very, very, uh, and big hearts as well. You know, frankly, uh, in that sense, uh, we're definitely taking a page out of their book and not vice versa. Uh, so appreciate your bringing that up, Mr. Srinivasan. Uh, I wanted to get to a, 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 a slightly more uh, contentious point, if you will, with, with, with at least I'm confronted with in the creative industry where people accuse us of, uh, as a digital industry, having so much data and so much, you know, so many metrics about everything, that uh, we're at risk of, you know, getting stuck in the echo chamber in terms of what works on uh, digital streaming. And I want to get a sense of how you guys uh, think about breaking out of that echo chamber, trying new things, giving people license, all the while knowing that perhaps this medium is more accountable because you can actually watch every person that's watching your show. How do you guys manage that balance? It's 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 something that you know I'm 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 figuring out as I go. I'd be nice to hear what what do you guys think about it. Uh, maybe Vijay, you can go first. Vijay Subramanian. Uh, yeah. Look, I, my views pretty much counter to what you said. I know. <laughs> our goal is our goal is not to fit into any one mold at all, uh, and our everyday endeavor is really to provide as wide a variety of stories um, that we can, uh, because we understand that we are programming for many Indians, uh, and um, and I'll come to the data point straight away. Sure, we have a lot of data, and you know, data is like 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 all good intended. Um, uh, uh, parts of science, it points us in, a, in, in certain directions. It also reaffirms some of the hypotheses that we have, but ultimately we are governed by the customer. You know, our goal is to reflect the taste and preferences of our customers. And she's pretty smart when it comes to entertainment. She's constantly evolving and we, are, we our job is to keep lockstep. And to that end, data is very helpful. And by data, I'm not just talking about a bunch of things that we see in terms of, you know, who's watching what. I'm talking about customer voices anecdotes, the kind of complaints they come to us with, the kind of things that they enjoyed watching and why, those are very insightful and powerful. But above and beyond all of that, I think they're governed by two things, customer obsession, you know, what's working in their world uh, and what are the things that they crave that, that are unmet? What are the things that they would, see, would like to see more of, so underrepresented? And then on the other hand, the insights that we draw and we try to match the two and right in the middle is the creator, the passion of the creator and the vision of the creator. So, I mean, if you just take, take a step back and look at our offering and, and apply what I just said, you can practically see this at play. You know, the way we went after comedy specials at the very beginning, when we saw a huge demand for it with young adult audiences, they were crowding, you know, coffee bars and, and, and you know, performance theaters because stand-up was a thing. Backing that trend came from customers. Um, encouraging uh, not only, you know, first time talent in Bandish Bandits, but doing a musical at a time when everyone says, hey, music only belongs to movies. You know, these are all great examples of why variety is so important. And the importance of using a very strong, always on customer centric approach and then, you know, learning from the insights. There are so many need gaps even now, Gautam. So, uh, Gaurav, it's not, it's not fair for us to believe that only one particular genre works or not. It may just be that, we, that you know, we've come rushing into an, a white space that's existed for a very long time. I'd like to believe crime is one such thing. Yes. But there are many other white spaces open and it's our goal. And I think it's the goal of all of us to find those white spaces because that's what customers are craving for. 
Well, that's nice. I, I, it's interesting you mentioned crime because I also mentioned crime to uh, Vijay and I got a very violent reaction. So uh, Vijay, what are your thoughts on, on, on crime being the lowest common denominator that works? In it's a Vijay thing, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, one is I'd like to say that uh, Bikitan is not the only group here adding to the diversity factor even um, we tvf also as a company uh, does not have access to as much data or whatever but but hey, there's no issues uh, the platforms give us the right insight they tell us what is working what is not working and and to us that feedback is is most important so so we we rest uh, go with that then the other part is um, unlike other creators we have our own communities so whenever we do any project or any uh, show or any series with any platform, we release some of it on our social media also. And you get a fair indication of what's working, what's not working. So for us, that much data is enough. And uh, we stick to the stories that we want to tell. So on the crime front, uh, we've not done any show so far on crime or we've not done a biopic or we've not done sci-fi. These are all genres which are doing extremely well uh, in the international space, at least. Um, and I think a lot of the platforms here also have, have dabbled in some form or the other, like sci-fi, Nikhil was mentioning the other day that they have started with something. So who knows? I mean, um, we will have something marinating um, and hopefully we will get some of these things. We're not saying that it doesn't work, but for us, uh, it's more about talking to the... Um, the real India, um, the, the ones living in tier two, tier three towns and, and telling their story. Uh, and most of our team also belongs from there. So they have their own insight. They have their own stories. And the beauty of it is all of it is so relatable. So uh, even a guy sitting in, in Agra or Meerut or someone sitting in Bhubaneswar or someone sitting in Kolaba or South Delhi, they all find it equally relatable. So that's the thing for us. We'd rather stick to our own insights and and not rely too heavily on data. Got it, Nikhil. What's your take? You're uh, are you going to agree with these guys? Are you going to disagree? How do you feel about the point of view? No, I think you know one of the interesting things is that um, I, I started by saying the 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 width of content on uh, Disney Plus Hotstar across different genres, right? So you have sports, you have news, you have movies, you have TV content, you know, uh, international content, original, the, the width is really massive. And I, I think one of the things that people don't realize is that the, when all, all of that data is available to you uh, in one platform, it actually encourages you to try so many more things because you start seeing connections between different genres, different types of content, and also start realizing that maybe some of the preconceived notions that you know, may exist are not true about how people are actually consuming uh, content, right? You may go in saying, you know, X, X genre romance may be, you know, uh, something that will appeal to a 18 year old girl or something, but you land up seeing her choices and those content choices are, are, are really vast, which actually gives you confidence to say, you know, hey, let's go out there and try something. Uh, you know, the example that I was referring to, uh, if you look at this show that we launched a couple of weeks ago called OK Computer, so it's a you know futuristic, quirky, madcap uh, comedy, and there's no amount of data in which will say that this is a genre which is popular in India and you must do it. But you're able to make connections and say, hey, this is this looks like a fantastic idea. It's extremely unique. It's not for everybody, right? So we put it on the platform. There were two you know young makers who made it. And it found its audience. Uh, some people who liked that genre loved it like deeply, and others were like, you know, uh, you know they didn't they didn't like it. But that's that's actually fair. I mean, it's it's the nature of the beast, right? You you have to make sure that you're creating something which is unique and offering something new. And I think that opportunity we shouldn't lose as far as this industry is concerned, because really you have the opportunity to create so much variety and so much uh, with. And the data is actually very useful because it gives you confidence to say, hey, this is not a 10 person opportunity. This is you know, probably a 10,000 person opportunity and you should go for it. You know, I hear you and, and, and I, I like the fact that uh, I think Vijay made a similar point that if the content is well formed and, and, and entertaining, then not only are we many Indias, the digital medium allows 
the person to choose which content they want to align with. And so if we, if, there's no reason to be in an echo chamber in, when, when we're not operating a broadcast model. So in that sense, I... Yeah, I, I, I remember even distinctly when we launched uh, Arya last year, I got a message from a friend of mine. Uh, he, his 82-year-old mother and his 14-year-old or 15-year-old son were sitting together and watching till one o'clock at night. And, you know, you won't normally expect that, uh, you know, these three people will represent to you demographically very three you know, distinct choices and say, oh, you know, how do they come together? But uh, that's how it, you know, that's what uh, happens. And unless you don't try it, you will never know. Sure. Mr. Srinivasan, your thoughts on, on breaking yes. up? Yeah, thanks, uh, Gaurav. Actually, we've been in a, we, we continue to remain in a very unique position because we come from the print industry as a, and uh, when we started our journey into television, that's about 22 years ago, we started off by creating a product which was which started the episode on print and finished the episode on television, right? And then we actually, it was a weekly and uh, our magazine was out every Thursday and the, and the product would be out at Thursday at 9.30. So we have always had a connection between writing our readers, their reactions, and creating stories around what excites our readers across genres, across our various magazines. So most of our products, be it the Tirumati Selvam, which became the Pavi, which became Pavitrashta and in five languages all over India simultaneously, we've always found stories which are grounded to reality and stories which want to be heard and which want to be spoken of you know, more or less with starting from the readers, from the feedback that we get from our readers, and then how our writers pick up from there. So I think we have, I would say that in many ways, we do have echo chambers, but I would, I would say that echo chamber is rather large because it comprises the print universe, the digital universe, as well as the television universe. So we've also been putting out our programs on YouTube since uh, 2011. And the kind of feedback that we would get, the comments that we would get for our everyday episodes would be extraordinary. They would be telling us the storyline, what should be coming ahead. And we would actually change our storyline based on the kind of feedback that we would get from them. And we would credit our user saying that this user on this date gave us this idea. And we would actually you know, give them a prize for it. So, I think this is where for us, you know, data points are not just the data points. We, we look at entire 360 degrees when it comes to storytelling. So today, even as we speak, we are getting, we, we've got about five different stories which we are pitching to multiple OTT platforms, all of which are some of the most read content on our magazines, on our websites, and those which are ready for OTT, we personally believe. We are kind of excited about these shows and we are really keen to explore. And we want to try and see if the same model which works for television will also work for OTT. But we do understand that OTT genre is a little more edgy and needs a little more, you know, and all of that depth, the characters and the kind of the, the, the universe that, the, that, that people are, you know, wanting to immerse themselves in as well as stories that need to be told. So we always think about why a story needs to be told before we decide what story needs to be told. And I think that really kind of, you know, that curiosity that we have consistently been building with our writers team, I think helps us create better stories. Interesting. I'm glad, I'm I, glad I, I, that the OTT, uh, sorry, sorry, I'm interrupting. Yeah, I'm glad that the OTT audience and the, the likes um, uh, or what kind of content they prefer is, is termed as edgy. Uh, if we were to go by that and the data there, um, some of our shows would have never seen the light of day. So I think it also depends on the faith and belief that the platforms also have uh, uh, in you as a content creator. And I will take a case in point is if I went out uh, with data and um, and try to make a show about a village where a young man goes there and, and then interacts with random people there. I mean, nobody would give us a, a chance. They would have said, forget it. But there's this one gentleman on this call right now 
who who said hey uh, i think this works uh, let's give it a shot and uh, and then we all know what happened with manjaya so it's probably one of the best shows that so it's it's about what is it that we can bring to the table the human emotions the the uh, the complexity of of all the relationships that happen there if and if it's told in a nice simple narrative um, i'm sure the audiences are willing to lap it up yeah that's a tough lo- log line to sell and uh, kudos <laughs> for selling it and buying it <laughs> i think i think more to the buying it uh, yeah and it's a vijay thing <laughs> <laughs> but i i think what uh, i think i'll change my name to vijay too <laughs> <laughs> so i think one of the points that you were making i think that we did um, come to this new long form uh, sort of content uh what you're calling ag maybe mr shri was perhaps you know it's got this eight part series six part series what have you hang points at the end of it and that that's one sort of uh, content that, that that's coming out of uh the, the ott stables but uh i also wanted to get to understand how are you guys getting influenced by the the short form movement which is very counter to the kind of uh, grammar that uh, the shows that you know uh, have gained the highest uh, acclaim have uh i mean i know and i guess there are different points of view around how you're addressing it uh maybe nikhil you can give us a sense of you know do they coexist or they uh, uh, you know uh, are they two completely different uh, consumption paradigms how do you see them no i think uh, it, it is a it's definitely in uh, i won't even say emerging opportunity it is you know uh, pretty much ar- around us uh, i think from our perspective just recently about a week ago we've launched an initiative called mm-hmm. quicks which is really uh, you know every day 10 to 10 to 12 minute bite size content uh, multiple shows uh, multiple episodes one drop uh, every day and it's really about not trying to uh, let's say go into territory which we are not you know experts at but this is something that we understand which is you know storytelling and you know characters that people can fall in love with now whether that happens to be you know a 10 minute long episode or a 30 10 minute long episode you know that's just in terms of how do you structure the story uh but that's an initiative that we've launched about a week uh, ago and it's early days the initial you know uh, performance seems to be quite encouraging but uh, over a period of time we'll see you know where we can take it from there but to answer your question yes we see that as uh, one opportunity and we you know got into that phase i'm curious to think to, to understand whether we the users the same but is it a different psychographic when the users consuming this and maybe i'll get uh, vijay and uh, vijay subramanian to give a thought around you know where the short form go and how do you guys as creators think about it i think it's a very important uh, ingredient to the overall entertainment uh, desire of consumers all right um, and i don't uh, necessarily agree that the users are the same they can be different as well sure uh, and uh, and even if they are the same they have very different needs driving them to the the content selections right um and it's really important there to to understand that variety is is of of great consequence so in, in fact the success of a short form is not because of any one genre it's just multitudes of great content coming from you know um homemade creators uh, who established their own style and so on and so forth and it's and it's very deeply engaging when done right so i think i think these look whether they whether they uh, are on the same service or not the fact is that all these forms of content coexist today as we speak um a customer a customer of ours on prime video has the choice to go to youtube and watch a bunch of short form short form videos and we acknowledge that uh, we also acknowledge that it's a very important uh sec, you know a uh, piece of entertainment that is very valuable to customers and and you know the the good thing at amazon is we never stop inventing so um we're definitely you know innovating um on that and uh, right now i don't have much to share with you but uh, pretty soon uh, you will hear about how we are uh, taking on the whole uh, universe of short form itself right but it's in your radar which is nice very much the front end center it's a big bleep awesome Vijay, how does it influence your thinking around content? Or is that okay, you know sure. you can even outside the off stump? You don't have to play every ball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, unlike the others who started with long form and then are now experimenting with short form, uh, our genesis was with short form. We we began with short form, and we kept experimenting there and uh, like a almost like a ten year journey. 
the good thing is uh, we did long form along the way at, at like around 2015 we did permanent roommates and we did pictures we did uh, tripling all of that happened and we tasted a, a fair degree of success but uh, we didn't abandon the short form we continued we persisted with that part of our uh, uh, business and you know uh, our founder arunab kumar he was very clear that uh, tvf should be like the infosys of content yeah so so while the big things are happening there is always a strong bench strength that needs to be created and that bench strength happens with short form so short form for us is like the ranji trophy uh, where people keep coming and practicing and delivering and then a, a, a bunch of people from there are then selected and thrown into the the big uh, ipls and and the other bcci formats so case in point again i'll go back to the panchayat example um the, the writer of panchayat chandan kumar um, has been the tv for four years and in that four years he's done nothing but work on short form and once we were confident that hey he is ready to deliver the goods then we threw him into the deep end of the sea and and then panchayat happened and so be old so for us uh, short form is uh, will go hand in hand with whatever else we do and uh, we have immense faith and ability um and and in fact uh, we've created different channels of short form we've got uh, tbf of course is the main mother channel we we created something called galiapa uh, way back in 2015 so uh, considering the online audience is more skewed like a 75 25 to male but we believe that hey there is no uh, unique content creator in the space for short form for women and we persisted since then we have not yet got the return that we would have liked but we persisted so for us short form is uh, is here to stay forever interesting uh mr shrinivasan thoughts on short yeah, form yeah that's a actually vijay that was a that's a great take and in fact that's something i'm i'm going to take away from today but the way we've used short form is that we we've, we've always used short form for promotion everything you know from our from our magazines to our products to everything we've tried to create those those short form videos whatever we've tried to put out on our platforms we've always tried to integrate some part of a bigger product that we've created and we've always tried to use that as a promotion platform but i think uh, bench strength as uh, you know a short form and then using those creators to grow into long form is a great idea and thanks very much for that yeah, it's it's also the fact that i guess short form is not a uh, a means to an end it is the end itself in in, in now <laughs> and then so that's a, that, that's fascinating in terms of you know where where the world is i wanted to get a uh a, a reaction on 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 the fact that you know i think everyone in in there is awake to uh, the regional opportunity and uh, Uh, that's more just knowing that people prefer consuming content in their own languages and 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 their own milieu i wanted to get a sense from you guys in terms of uh, what are you disappointed in with the industry in that you know are we just taking in the, you know the hindi playbook and moving it to regional should we be doing more what's uh, i guess what's your bug bears and what would you like to see us do better as an industry uh, uh vijay why don't you go first vijay so come on firstly i don't think uh, uh, thankfully because we we are we are complete we remain customer obsessed we recognize that the customers are, are completely different absolutely uh, their identities their tastes cultures uh, social norms and so on and so forth and so we've never believed in in a centralized approach to our programming um right from the get go um so if you look at if you look at the the selection that we have on the service in in practically any regional language let's just use tamil and telugu and, and kannada and malayalam the southern ones uh, as an example if you look at the selections there they're driven entirely by insights of tastes and preferences from each of those individual markets those segments those cohorts those customers those micro communities and so on and so forth our successes and failures come from our understanding of that or a lack of understanding of that and that's the way we view it we do not for a minute think that oh we 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 figured it out in hindi so let's just uh, you know trim some stuff and that's going to work in uh, in in chennai or coimbatore why these are fully serviced thriving entertainment industries in and of themselves 
Yeah. If we kid ourselves sitting in Mumbai that, oh, they must be missing a big Hindi movie. No, they have their own big movies, right? They have their own great shows. They have their own stars and the and a culture that follows around it. You know, so I and they have their own fandom. So, you know, because for us making sure that we are serving the many Indias and the many customers, and we just follow their insights, and that's a great learning. Um, Yes, there's always this thing about being a one service with multiple languages. There is this expectation of, you know, will you dub content? Yes, we do dub content just to make it easy in case someone, uh, you, know, it, it, you know, a Tamil speaking gentleman in Madurai decides to watch uh, a Hindi show of ours. We want to make it con convenient for that person to watch it in the language of their choice. But otherwise, the programming is distinct. It will always be distinct. I'll be driven by insights coming from there. Here's a fun fact, okay, by getting this right, um, I'll, I'll, we, we put this out sometime late last year, you know, 50% of the viewership for our uh, regional films are coming from outside the home state. Wow. That's the level of curiosity that being authentic and programming for those customers is doing. You know, so today there are people writing to us from Jamshedpur thanking us for Joji. All right. Uh, and then and, and then one has to wonder that this is only because we are not thinking about Hindi and saying, okay, this is, let's make a few variants. But we're literally thinking about each language and each uh, community and society independently in and of itself. Very cool. Very, very cool. The other video. Yeah, I mean, uh, the regional cinema is absolutely killing it. No? I mean, you take Bengali, you take uh, Marathi, you take... Uh, of course, the, the Malayalam... Impressive uh, content as well. I mean, yeah, it's, it's absolutely. Got a bad absolutely. Rare, absolutely. So, and thanks to platforms like Amazon and Hotstar, I think it's getting a large exposure outside that particular regional community. <clears throat> and that's helping. Uh, in fact, a lot of my friends and colleagues who had never watched Malayalam movies are now hooked onto it big time. I mean, I was, I was uh, seeing a post of Gajarajji the other day. He was like... He's obsessed with Pahad Pasil's movies and he's like, he, he made a dig at the, the Bollywood industry thing that uh, we, we spent so much time in marketing and, and this, that and the other. I wish we invested that much time in making good content like you guys do. Uh, so, so, and I was just seeing another uh, chat on Film Companion where Rajkumar Rao and Vicky Kaushal are all... Uh, big fans of regional content and wanting to take a stab at, at that part of it. From us, um, we are looking at regional in two perspectives. One is, uh, one, um, and both of them are already rolling. Um, one is remakes of our popular shows. Like uh, this is what we've done with Permanent Roommates in Telugu. It debuted last year on a Telugu platform called AHA. And we've got some more remakes scheduled in Telugu and hopefully later this year in other regional languages. And there are some platforms which are saying, no, uh, we don't want remakes. We want original stories which talk about the flavor and the spirit of that particular region. So we are uh, open to doing both. And we're extremely bullish about uh, these markets. And uh, you will see lots of uh, content coming from the house of PVF in the regional space. So. Got it. Very encouraging. Nikhil, not, not I think, uh, up, but I did want to make an important point. So, and you know, at, at, at least on the on on my team, we don't call it regional language; we call it local language, nice. right? And there's a huge distinction right there. Uh, region means it's external; it's something elsewhere. Local means you're in it. And as far as uh, you know, uh, Kannadiga and Bangalore is concerned, Hindi is a local language that's spoken in the northwest, perhaps. Right or Hindi is a regional language, so we're very, very particular because that's the mental model we have. But this hey, is man. about local language, and th these are about local communities. Those nuances are important. That's very nice, Nikhil. I think you spoke about uh, Gaurav some bugbear. So let me uh, tackle that. I think the first part is that, from a creative fraternity point of view, or at least even from a producer's or platform point of view, this Mumbai-centric approach is wrong. Uh, so how are you structured organizationally? Right. So for us and Mr. Srinivasan is here, you will have people sitting out of those markets, right? Uh, people from Hotstar who are sitting out of those markets, interacting with people like Mr. Srinivasan on a daily basis and having those conversations to say, does this, you know, is, is this something which is locally appealing? Is it culturally specific to the state that I'm trying to address? 
uh, versus you know sitting out of mumbai and you know expecting them to come here and pitch your you know uh, ideas etc so i think the way you structured organizationally also is a great example of how committed you are and how deep you want to go and how well you want to serve the consumer so that's one uh, very important aspect and second uh, aspect also is that when you when you uh, when you're looking at uh, you know local local language content the uh the the ability for you to be able to uh you know connect with your creative partners is extremely important and it you know it it links back to the first point if i'm close i'm right down there i'm you know i'm with them i'm in the trenches i know what you know i'm trying to do that's when it works best and the final part is localization should not be and i i, I fear that this is a problem somewhere that anything that's if i'm doing 10 shows let's say two in marathi two in bengali two in tamil one in gujarati that's my regional strategy no if you're serving a market that person in tamil nadu or you know andhra should feel like this is a service that's made for me the volume of content the kind of quality of content should be addressing me he should feel that this is a brand for me not someone sitting here feeling okay i've done 10 shows which are non hindi and that's a great regional strategy so i think those are the couple of bugbears that I nice. think you should. Very very nice. Uh, last word, Mr. Srinivasan. Are yeah. You, are, you, are you satisfied by what you're hearing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, many platforms are actually reaching out, and they're actually they've they've created local teams which are you know trying to uh, you know ensure that the local um, uh, language flavor is uh, is kind of imbibed. You know, we are we are fiercely tamil we are fiercely dravidian we are fiercely periyaris we are like we come from completely different lands right so i think and each of our languages you know each of our cultures our society everything is so different that when we tell stories that people want to hear uh, i mean i i think it's it's very important that you understand the context from which we come and i think you know ott platforms are definitely you know doing that because that's the only way it's going to work you know the Mum- mumbai or la culture will not work in chennai and i'm sure you know what's already been established in television and in movies is definitely going to be established in ott also um i mean that being said i would say that you know in in television our pavitra rishta was able to travel and our tirumadi selvam was able to travel as local product in five different languages and ended up as super hit in all five languages so there is so much of capacity for a local language product to travel across so there there are both ways hindi could come to tamil tamil could go to hindi so both are possible and we are right in the middle of that that's a great perspective guys i got to cut this short it's been enormous fun chatting with you guys but we got to let next panel on thank you so much thank you for doing this gaurav thanks gaurav thanks everyone bye 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 bye